bringing Kevin Hassett, former CEA chairman and distinguished visiting fellow at the Hoover Institution, and Wendy Edelberg, economic studies senior fellow at Brookings and a director uh, of the Hamilton Project. Just, I could almost be half full about this, Wendy. And I mean, you know, we want the labor market to eventually so, show signs of weakening in terms of wage gains, but it's held up pretty well in the face of 475 basis points. Be nice if we had a fairly strong economy after all these, these increases and still got inflation under control, hence maybe have a soft landing. So here's what I learned in the employment report on Friday, that the labor market is slowing, but only slowly. So the, the pace of job gains over the past three months was about 350,000. And by my estimation, that's more than three times the sustainable rate given population growth and what we know about labor force participation rates. And speaking of population, by my estimate, the size of the labor force is about a million smaller that it would have been in the absence of the pandemic and reduced immigration. Some people have said that it's, it's fully recovered, but I think they're getting misled by some complicated data revisions. So the silver lining here in my mind is that job gains have to slow and inflation has to come down and they can both come down to earth together. And I think that that makes a softish landing entirely possible. This is what we probably like, Kevin. It and so I was feeling pretty good, but then I think about the debt ceiling and I think about 32 trillion and, and everything, and then I start worrying again long term. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I thought Wendy's numbers were were really interesting and right on. And I'm looking at a few other things, but but one thing is just history, because I'm a lot older than Wendy. And and the fact is that there are a lot of cycles where the job market kind of lags everything else. And uh, you know, that they you know, wages lag and employment lags. And I think that there are signs that this is maybe going to be the one where the lag from the jobs number or the separation of the jobs number from what we see in real activity is the largest. And you can sort of see that in the fact that, you know, hours are really, really going down and productivity is presumably going down a lot. And so the first thing is that, that I think that we are making progress on activity. You can see that in the goods producing sector. We are making some progress on inflation. But my guess is that you're not going to see the early signal in the job market that you usually do. And, and that's why, like, like when Steve mentioned that he's really looking forward, uh, forward to the retail sales number, I, I kind of agree with him that looking at the real output and the real purchases uh, is probably going to be more interesting right now than the jobs numbers because they're so different than what we've experienced in the past. Well, Kevin, if if Rick and Steve are both right about the, that the yield curve is where it's supposed to be, should the Fed keep going? So that if, they're, if they're not going to be able to budge real rates where they are, why keep, why, why keep going through the motions like that? Just for psychological reasons, to, to show their firmness and their resolve in fighting inflation and staying the course? Is that right. why you do it? Well, well, you know, I, I actually disagree that the interest rates have peaked and, and I could be an outlier. Yeah. But, mm. but the fact is that, you know, we were in the fours just a little while ago and then we had the bank panic. And it looks like the you know regulators and policymakers have stopped that by feeding a lot of liquidity into the market. The liquidity is in the end, you know, a positive for inflation. And the bank panic, I think, you know, in a few weeks, everybody's going to decide that that's gone. And I think that that means that yields need to go back up where they were before the panic began. And so, and so I think there's a significant upside risk for interest rates right now. When do you think they should go another 25? And do you think we that, that won't be the last? Or do you think that's the last? I think that the Fed needs to keep going until it sees uh, in the published inflation data some good news, some good news of like we saw in the fall. Uh, and then we got head faked and the last few months have gone in the wrong direction. But I, I agree with Kevin that the retail sales release at the end of this week is super important. I think one of the defining factors of the economy right now is the strength of consumer spending. Consumers are spending like there was no pandemic and we don't have a labor market like there was no pandemic. And so something's got to give. And I am surprised that we are still spending on goods. How can we still have room for all this stuff that we're purchasing. Uh, but the retail sales release will tell us whether or not consumers are finally satiated and finally really responding in earnest to higher interest rates. 